no pet of any kind is right for everybody, and certainly there is no snake that is one size fits all. But there are some snakes that are right for almost everybody, and we know what they are. What if I told you there are five right for almost everybody snakes you've never even heard of? My name's Adam, this one is Cornholio. You're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. I am not kidding, this corn snake's name is Cornholio. Beautiful corn snake, obviously not going to make the list, but I wanted to do some comparison because everybody knows the ball pythons, even the boas for some people, definitely corn snakes are some of the most popular pets and right for almost everybody. But what if you want something your friends don't have? Maybe this is kind of a hipster list. I got it before it was cool because I think all of these reptiles are gonna bump up in popularity very soon. Also, the Australians are gonna love this list. If you guys don't know, in Australia, you can only keep Australian animals and of the animals on this list three of them fit in that category. So let's start off with number five an Australian animal one that I love and is new to my collection carpet pythons. What's great about carpet pythons is there's one for everybody. If you decide that carpet pythons are for me I mean then there's going to be one for you because there's a bunch of different species. For example if you want one of the larger species, you want something like a coastal. This is the biggest of all the species. They can get over nine feet, quite substantial size and girth as well. And if you want something a little bit smaller, then get an Erie and Jaya. They're gonna stay around four, five, six foot, females getting bigger than males, of course. And it just depends. I mean, coastals are gonna be from Australia, as almost all of them are. And Erie and Jaya's are the only species that occur not in Australia. Now this is a python species, so they're gonna be bigger than this. They do have heat pits, so they're gonna be looking for a warm heat heat signature, so you're gonna be able to feed them things like rats, mice, things like that, and you're gonna have a great response from them as long as they're warm. I recommend always frozen thawed or better, so you buy frozen animals that you then thaw out, you make them warm. I don't like feeding live rodents, feels a little icky to me. Plus, carpets come in some amazing colorations. I love the jungles, that's what I have. I have a jungle Erie and Jaya cross. The jungles are spectacularly yellow. If you couldn't tell, I love yellow snakes. Also, if you want something even crazier, oh my goodness, diamond pythons might be some of the coolest looking of all of the natural occurring, not a morph, carpet pythons. And each of these carpet python species come from a different part of Australia, and in some cases, other places on the planet too. Easy to take care of, they are arboreal, which I love, so you can have an enclosure a little bit higher, and they're gonna move around. These animals love to move and groove. They're not going to be just sitting stagnant in one place. I love that about these animals, and they come in a bunch of morphs. Carpet pythons for the win. Number four, garter snakes. So this is a North American colubrid, and so are garter snakes. I find garter snakes in my backyard. I found garter snakes literally on busy street corners in the grass. I found them all over the woods. I find garter snakes everywhere. And where you're gonna find them are in people's collections more and more. And that's because there's more captive breeding going on. As always, you don't wanna be just taking things out of the wild. Don't get a garter snake from your backyard. I promise you, it's not gonna eat right. It's gonna have a parasite load. It's gonna die in your care. It's a bad idea. Let me get this straight. They're semi-aquatic, semi-arboreal. And the reason that I think that is because in captivity, Activity. Almost every species I've seen, you can just see these things up in the trees. You see them in the water all the time. People set them up in paludariums. And what I love is most snakes you want to keep alone. I keep my corn snakes alone. Each one gets their own enclosure, but garter snakes actually benefit from being kept together. So you want to make sure that you understand the size requirements, how big of an enclosure you need for a certain amount of snakes, but the snakes are usually pretty small. I mean, some garter snakes top out at two and a half or three feet, and then of course they are live bearing animals, which means you'll never find eggs in your garter snake enclosure. They just don't do that they give live birth. So if you do house a male and a female together, just be aware that's going to happen. And if you're new to snakes, this is probably not a good idea. I'd leave breeding for the professionals. Starter snakes are highly underrated. And by the way, if you want a venomous snake, they're technically venomous. They're rear fang venomous and they've never done any harm to a human being ever. Might make you a little bit itchy in the same way that a bee sting might hurt you. That's the way that they would hurt you too. So something cool to say, I have a venomous snake to your friends when really it's not gonna hurt anybody. Number three, Woma pythons, another Australia python species. Woma pythons are underrated and they're a little bit harder to find, but I've noticed at expos, they're becoming more and more available. This list isn't the cheapest snake options. If you want a ball python or a corn snake, you can get them for 50 bucks all day long. But if you want a Woma python, it's a little bit more of a wow factor. There's only one genus of pythons in the entire world that do not have heat pits. So they do not pick up heat signatures. Both species in the genus are from Australia. 
Loma pythons, and black-headed pythons. Now, if you want a black-headed python, I recommend starting to play the lottery today, and maybe if you win two or three of them, I'm kidding. They're expensive, but not that expensive. Loma pythons, I see them for around 400 bucks. So they're not crazy expensive, and we're starting to see more captive bred ones. Now, these are not like garter snakes. They do lay eggs, but they are really interesting in that they like it a little bit drier than what you'd see with, I don't know, a ball python, for example. They are from Australia. They're from different parts of Australia. And although they don't have that black head, they have that really cool shield on their head. In fact, their Latin name means shield bearer. Also, what's great is don't worry about warming up your frozen thawed rodents because they don't have heat pits. So you're not gonna have to worry about them refusing because the rat isn't the right temperature like my berms do. They're kind of drama queens. These guys aren't, but keep in mind, they have a voracious appetite and they will eat for you. So be careful. Just if they think so, it's food, make sure you use a hook to get them out, or at least they know they're not getting fed before you pick them up. But something that your friends probably aren't going to have, unless you live in Australia, maybe, especially if you live in Europe or North America, very rare to have in personal collections. And something I find a really cool next step if you already have something that you really really love or you just want something that you're going to really love off the bat that's not going to be in everybody else's collection woma pythons for number two let's talk about rat snakes which is what corn snakes are by the way all corn snakes are rat snakes but not all rat snakes are corn snakes and one that is certainly not a corn snake is the Mandarin rat snake. Now these are an Asian rat snake, as you'd guess by the name, found in parts of China and around areas just like that. And what makes them unique, not only are they yellow and black, which I love, one of the most beautiful non-venomous snakes. I had an opportunity to get one a few years ago, I guess it was five years ago, and I've regretted every day not getting this animal when I had the chance because they're difficult to find as adults and as babies, they are pretty expensive. But the reason I passed it up is because this was when I was newer on YouTube, I lived in a different house, I didn't have tons and tons of room, and I was kind of limited to one room in my house for reptiles. That was too warm for animals like crested geckos, which I had, which were upstairs, and mandarin rat snakes. But I didn't have anywhere upstairs to put them, so I couldn't get it. I wasn't able to take care of them properly, and that's why I forewent it. But if you're somebody who has an area in your house that will drop into the 60s at night and doesn't get higher than the low 80s during the day, this might be the snake for you. They love it a little bit more humid, but also a little bit cooler. So imagine, say, the Chinese cave gecko of the snake world, but even more beautiful, that's a mandarin rat snake. Plus, if you want a male, four feet, a female, maybe four and a half feet, they're gonna stay pretty small for you. So this is actually bigger than your average mandarin rat snake. I am obsessed with the way they look. I want one so freaking bad. And of all the snakes in the world that I've wanted, this is one of them that I haven't been able to get my hands on yet. But if you haven't already, hit subscribe, because you're definitely gonna see a mandarin rat snake in my collection sooner than later. Now keep in mind, they are a little bit more shy, so they are handleable. I mean, you have to do a little bit of work with them. They're probably not gonna be as handleable as a corn snake right off the bat, but this is an animal great for handling and they'll be hiding in their enclosure most of the time. So if you want an Asian rat snake that's gonna be out and about more, maybe get yourself a rhino rat snake instead. I have a few of those. I absolutely love them. But if you want something that you don't mind is gonna hide all the time and you can just take out and show your friends and handle for your own enjoyment, mandarin rat snakes. And number one, Antaresia. I'm so sorry to do this to you if you've been a viewer on the channel for a long time. I've been talking about Antaresia for so long. I've been accused of talking about them to jack up their price as if I am some sort of Antaresia shill. No, 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 I don't even breed them. I just love them. Antaresia, another python species from Australia that I think might be the best beginner pet snake in the world period, not even close. And the reason is ball pythons, which are considered the best python species by most people, have issues eating, they'll go off food. Sometimes they are a little bit too humid loving for some people, so it creates issues. Antaresia is a genus, so let's be specific. Children's pythons, pygmy pythons, which are the smallest python species in the world, and my favorite, spotted pythons. So spotted pythons, in my opinion, are the coolest and the best because they're the biggest of the three species in the genus, but still, four feet, maybe five if you get a ginormous one, but they're gonna be about this thick. So this is a five foot animal. Does this look like I'm struggling at all? No, this animal couldn't do anything to hurt me. I mean, all snakes could bite you, but it's gonna be some pinpricks and that's it. And spotted pythons, although in North America and Europe are 
pickings for morphs are pretty limited, if not none at all. In Australia, you actually have a lot more options. If you want the nicest species that's least likely to bite you, because pygmies sometimes can be cantankerous, although pretty small, well, spotted pythons, in my experience, are really easy to take care of and really easy to handle without too much worry. I've had Jimmy since he was a baby in 20. 19 I think maybe and I've never been bit by him once and you can see the size of him This is him literally today Trish holding him So this is an animal that's you know four or maybe five years old He had a little issue getting on food originally, but once they get going on food easy peasy lemon squeezy He eats every single time so easy to take care of the perfect size. They are semi arboreal So if you want to give them space, they will actually climb They're not gonna sit there like a green tree python or an Amazon tree boa they're actually gonna be moving all the time. I love this species. I've been talking about them for years and you guys are just lucky I spared you Doomerals boas because they definitely could have fit on the list too. But you let me know, what snakes do you think are kind of hipster snakes that would have fit on this list? Please do hit like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks again, Beast Lord, for sponsoring today's episode. And as always, a special thanks to the Patreon supporters. You guys are get videos early, discounts on merch, one-on-ones. I love having one-on-one -on -one conversations with you guys. So much fun. All that and more for as little as a dollar a month. That's it. I do videos on Mondays and Thursdays, so that means I'll see you in the next one.